This is Robert Kraft, and I'm your host on SNN Network. And joining me right now is Alan Pangborn. He is the CEO and director of Chesapeake Gold Corp. It's a publicly traded company. I got two symbols for you, CKG on the TSX Venture and CHPGF on the OTCQB. And you can actually see Alan give a presentation at the upcoming Precious Metals Summit, which will be both virtual and in person in Beaver Creek happening September 8th through the 11th. And we're a proud media sponsor of the event. And with that, Alan, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm doing really well, Robert. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you on. So we last had a representative from Chesapeake Gold on the program. I, I think it was about two years ago. So I'd love to get the, the full wrap. You know, every press release, every detail from the last two, uh, but in all serious, Alan, some, some of the highlights, I guess you'd say. Yeah, so over the last two years, a lot has actually changed. Um, there was a deal announced in late November last year, early December, somewhere around there. Um, and a new management team came in in January. And so we've got a totally new approach to this project. In a lot of ways, it's been forgotten about. It's a massive reserve and resource in, in Mexico, over 20 million ounces of gold, and 500 million ounces of silver. So absolutely huge, um, but we've come up with a more interesting approach that allows us to start smaller, step into it, iron out all the bugs and then expand. Um, and literally the other day we released our, our PEA and that shows a $1.4 billion Canadian dollar MPV with a 35% return IRR and only $360 million. And that's really important, that last number, because it shows that it's a financeable, deliverable, and then expandable project for Metatis, uh, for Chesapeake, and we don't need to bring a major in, unlike the previous project. So a totally new approach, brand new my, uh, management team in a slightly different direction, but a way we believe we can develop the project. And that's what we've been doing for the last six months is getting that study, doing some drilling. We released some results of some drilling for the metallurgical test work holes about a month ago, I think, that showed on average 18% higher than expected, which was a nice surprise. We weren't looking for that, but now we'll go back and look at, is there a higher grade piece that we can drill off with some infill drilling? And that obviously would be a improvement to the study that we just put out. Very good. Th thank you for that full update. So there's a couple different rabbit holes we can go down there and we'll get to them. But the first one I wanted to touch on is, can you describe a little bit more in depth what the new approach was that got you to these results? And we're recording this, by the way, on Monday, July 26th, literally the same day you announced the PEA. So, you know, what, how did you, how, what, what was the change in approach to get to where we're with this news that you put out today? Um, so two or three years ago, myself and three other guys put together a private company and I'd been following a technology that allows you to heap leach gold sulfides. It's a different way to do it and it completely changes the economics of a sulfide refractory gold. So we did that about three years ago, and then we've been looking for a project that makes sense. And so we talked to a lot of different parties. And, you know, whenever you're doing a deal, you have to tick three boxes. Technically, do you know that it will work? So you get some samples and do some tests. We did that. We did that on several deposits. Chesapeake, it appeared to work. So we move forward. Um, the second one is can you come to a financial agreement that makes sense to both parties? With a deposit as large as Metatis, the upside of being able to switch to this process is massive. And that's what you can see with the results from the study that we just put out, considering we are only touching less than 20% of the total resource, there's a lot more to come. And you can get 1.4 billion out of 20%. What can you get out of the rest of it? So there was a way we could come up with a financial agreement that was interesting for us and interesting for them because of the upside. And then finally, social. You've got to come to an agreement with the previous CEO, myself and others in the team on how we're going to restructure the company, 
who's going to lead it, who's going to stay on the board, who are we going to bring on the board, all of those social issues. And when you can tick all three boxes, you've got a deal. And that's what happened. So we got that deal, started all the work that we needed to do that culminated in the PEA that just came out, that shows what I said before, a, a financeable, deliverable, and then expandable project based on this new approach. The new approach is really interesting because it potentially will change the industry. The easy gold has already been mined. All the oxide deposits and heat bleaching, all been done. Everybody knows how to do that. If you can find a more economic way and a greener way to attack the sulfide deposits, you've got a winner. And this process by doing it in a heat bleach gives you three, three or four things. First one, simplicity. Heat bleaches are inherently simpler than an autoclave plant or a smelter or a roaster. It, it just is. It uses 90% less energy. It uses 90% less water. And then probably most important for local communities, there's no tailings dam. And so when you put all of that together, you can see why we're so excited to go down this route because it gives us superior economic returns, much lower capital. And as I said, less water, less power, no tailings dam, it's greener, which makes permitting easier. And so, you know, one of the other rabbit holes I wanted to go down here today, um, because I, look, we could talk about heat bleach, that'll probably be another two hours just to get the full explanation of how all that works. But, uh, you know, I, I, as you said, there's new management, new CEO, we spoke with a different representative a couple of years ago, you know, so what's your background? I mean, how, what, how, again, how did you get to where you're at today? So I'm a metallurgist by profession, um, as you can pick from the accent, I'm not Canadian. Um, I actually what? went to school in, in Australia uh, and started my career in Australia. Um, and I've either been operating or designing and building projects or fixing projects, multiple roles, my entire career. Um, this is country number seven that I've lived in. It's probably country number 20 I've worked in. Um, probably spent about the same amount of time in the copper side of the business as I have in gold and silver. So equally balanced, seen a lot of different processes, worked in a lot of different countries and projects. Um, spent 15 years with BHP, um, during which time I built two of their major projects. The last one being the Spence Copper Project in Chile, which at the time was the largest single build sulfide heat leach that's doing exactly the same in the copper business as we're planning to do in the gold business. And that's where a lot of this concept comes from. We know the practicality of how to implement it into the gold business. It's never been done before in the gold business, not the way we're going to do it. So, so that's my background. My most recent role, a couple of recent roles, I was CEO of Guyana Goldfields for a short period of time, came in to try and fix it got a bit of a surprise and we ended up having to sell it a lot faster than I hoped we would. I did actually believe we can fix it. And the, the buyer is doing exactly what we were planning to do. Just they have money. We didn't have any money left in the till by the time I got there. Um, prior to that, for five years, five, yeah, five years, I was the COO at SSR Mining. I joined when they brought a new management team in to fix up the Piraquitas project in Argentina, which wasn't doing what it was supposed to be doing. So that was my first target role I had to get sorted out. Um, and then we did two more acquisitions, which were both turnaround jobs as well. And that was Marigold in the US and then CB in Northern Saskatchewan. And when you put all of that together over that five years, we changed the company from a single asset struggling to meet its targets in Argentina to multiple assets across three jurisdictions, all exceeding their target or meeting, meeting targets. Uh, we hit, we hit um, guidance every year for over seven years in a row, starting from when I joined the company. Um, and we built that company from $500 million to over a couple of billion. They recently merged with Elisa and now 
a laces management that's taken over the SSR management, which is great for me because a couple of the guys I used to work with have come and joined us on this trip and, and see if we can do it again. And that's the plan. Start with Metatis small, grow it, and then do it again. So Alan, with that, where can our audience go and find more information about Chesapeake Gold? Um, there's probably two places. The first obvious one being the website. And the second one is that I'll actually be at the Beaver Creek Conference. And please come and listen to the presentation. I'm more than happy to try and answer all of your questions. Very good. And that's at chesapeakegold.com. Correct. Um, Alan, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for thank your time. You. Thank you. Again, my name is Robert Kraft. I'm your host on SNN Network, and we're a proud media sponsor for the upcoming Precious Metal Summit hybrid event in Beaver Creek and virtual happening September 8th through 11, 2021. You'll be able to see Alan there doing a presentation. Thank you all for listening.